All right, what's going on dudes and welcome to Maya. This time we're going to be doing a little behind the scenes for at least the animation portion of Fallen Kingdom because that was sort of my whole dealio as far as what I was involved with. Um, but I had lots of help this time and David is joining me in the call or bootstrap buckaroo as you may know him. And uh, we're just going to take a look at some of the scenes and, and see what's up and, and what went into making the visuals happen. So... Yeah, let's do yeah. this. <laughs> All right. Take a wonderful journey on uh, this uh, epic uh, venture on things. Of a king getting kind of kind of destroyed. Bummer. He's kind of a douche. You think so? I think he's kind of a douche. Why is that? I don't know. He's like, oh, look at me. I'm fantastic. It's like, oh, no. He's under pressure, and then he just abandons everything, you know? He didn't really so. know his the wife and kid. They were They were pretty much zombie snacks. At that point, so uh, it was just a mistress. It was, it was a, <laughs> important to him. Fair enough. Fair enough. You have a point. Okay. Well, uh, we're starting off in the puppet cart scene, so I guess I can just quickly play it through in the viewport, as you saw it in the video. Um, so some of the new things this time were, since you modeled the king, you decided to add some some fancy new features to him. There's um, actually a little uh, secret about the king. And I think you kind of know about this, but originally when I made him, it was a joke. Burger King. It was totally the Burger King thing. <laughs> and when I showed it to you, I said, yeah, that looks good. I was like, all right, we're using the Burger King. <laughs> I thought you kind of modeled it after yourself a little bit too. Maybe, but I was actually going to Burger King. You said, yeah, can I have a king and la, 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 la. And I was thinking, it's like, okay, king. And the first thing that popped in my head was freaking Burger King. <laughs> So that's what you got. I kind of, I kind of got that second. I think my first reaction was actually you modeled it after yourself. Because the little hair f flips on, behind his ears, I actually added it afterwards. Yeah, to help break him away from that uh, stereotype. <laughs> I'll, I saw a lot of comments. So a lot of people recognize Burger King. Like, look at poor Burger King losing Especially his smiles, losing his kingdom. That's why he was employed by Burger King afterwards. Oh, I know. <laughs> got, to, got to find work somewhere. So yeah, the uh, the end cloth jacket was new, dynamics. Yeah, yeah so there's a lot of uh, end cloth objects that were used on these, uh, a lot of the scenes. End cloth is basically just uh, Maya dynamic. That yeah, it's Maya's uh, uh, cloth dynamics, but it can be used for multiple things. And uh, you'll see a few of those uh, examples. In the explosions and whatnot. Yeah. So uh, the rig actually had a bunch of new features this time that that David added. Um, as opposed to in Revenge, it was a, a lot more basic. So he actually has fingers, which you can't see while he is in the puppet cart. But if I say back up here, you can see a finger moving. He is giving us the finger at the moment. <laughs> How rude of you. I, that was kind of an accident. It just happened to work out. I'm that sure way. it was. <laughs> um, and there was also... Uh, a lot of different brow adjustments this time, so he could look a lot more sad than last time. Also, um, adjusting like the inflection of the brow. You can make him look super angry if you want, super evil, or you can flip it around and make him look really sad. Oh, poor, poor king. <laughs> I give him huge, thick eyebrows. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the pupil yeah. dilation was also a super nice touch for the... Um, that was a late addition yeah it was but it, like allowed him to uh to be scared or give him the puppy eye thing yeah the he, puppy uh, eye the... thing when he recovers the crown that sort of thing <laughs> gold oh fuck i fuck gold. Gold. <laughs> gold so the uh yeah the final thing that i thought was awesome in this is the fact that you actually manually animated the puppet it looks entirely dynamic but it was actually manually done. Yeah, originally I was going to go dynamic on it, but I was uh, having more trouble with that than actually doing it manual. So I said, screw it, do it manual. Three yeah. times. <laughs> oh, yeah. God, this scene gave you so much trouble. Yeah, I uh, saved over the scene over itself at least twice, and so I ended up having to do the scene thrice. So it was... Uh, uh, it's always such a bummer when you I have to do It's actually my least favorite scene, time. and uh, that might be the reason why. I think... You know, oftentimes you associate how well done you think something is with, like, how you were feeling while working on it. Well, yeah, you know, it's so, just like, look at that cake. It's awesome, you know. 
and then it explodes and sharp pointy pieces of shrapnel <laughs> pierce your face. Or it's like, oh. Spiders, spiders come out of it. <laughs> spiders, yeah. Spiders come out. And, um, you know, then, you know, it's like, even though the cake, the cake tasted fantastic, but when they exploded full of spiders, man. Bad it, memories. It, bad memories. <laughs> Left a bad taste in my mouth. All right. So I think we should actually jump on over to the uh, the bridge scene and check out some end cloth explosions. All right. So now we're in the uh, the bridge retreat scene, which would you say is probably the the most involved scene that you you had to make? Uh, yes and no. I say the previous scene that we just looked at was probably the most involved scene. <laughs> well, aside from aside from saving mistakes. <laughs> Uh, as far no, as animation goes, probably. Actually, the battle scene was the most the battle because scene too, there was yeah. a lot of uh, figures going on. Mm. Uh, this was this wasn't as bad because uh, the creeper barely moves; he's just sleeping, <laughs> you know. And then the uh, king walks up rudely and awakens him while he's taking a nap, you know. Yeah, in case you didn't know, when creepers blow up next to each other, they apparently just put each other to sleep. I know. I just oh, he's snapping. <laughs> the look at that, you know, around frame fifty. Dude, he just really wakens that creeper, man. Okay, well, jerk. this explosion had some, uh, this explosion, this scene had some end cloth explosions that you actually had to rebuild the entire segment of the bridge in order yeah, to actually um, do. Yeah, that, that team of fellows, which their names uh, Fire escaped me, uh, uh, built this bridge, and then it's, the set is actually really awesome. I was actually... Uh, uh, privilege to uh, actually use the set in Maya because it uh, it uh, um, well overdone <laughs> my expe- expectations um, extremely thorough. But anyways, back to the, uh, the bridge to get this the bridge to work. I had to go back and recreate the entire center of the bridge. Lock so by ba- lock basically, by. he had to go and delete this entire chunk right here that's highlighted and rebuild that with bl- individual blocks and then convert that to. An end cloth object, which is again Maya's cloth dynamics, and then, and then how do you go about making it go boom? More dynamics, my friend. <laughs> uh, there's these radial uh, um, influencers that push blocks out. So basically, on a certain keyframe, I have it set so uh, depending on its value, it would push these blocks out and uh, respond to gravity and all other aspects of these uh, uh, dynamic fields, and uh, they fall. And, and then you also had to make some colliders on the ground as well, so they don't just yeah. Sink the actual the t- entire bottom of the set is all one big um, collision mesh. So um, and also there's a roof that caves in, which was another added element. Yeah, on the second explosion there, you can see that the uh, the barn roof collapses. Kaboom! Although that's actually not in this scene because the camera angle doesn't go down there. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the external shots that that we rendered out for uh, actually splicing you rendered between. out didn't yep. you yeah, yeah you I, rendered rendered out those, I rendered those out so anyway the, the barn collapse isn't actually here because the, the flag was removed to reduce the intensity since it wasn't included in the shot I wonder if it's actually still on our roof collapse uh, in roof oh there it is if, if you see the object in roof and make it visible let's see It'll pop up. And there we go. There's the roof shown and hidden again. <laughs> <laughs> really? Get this keyframed? <laughs> All right. So anyway, that was that's basically it for the retreat scene. And then we just went ahead and uh, rendered it out in every 0.25 frames. So even though it was animated in real time, uh, we were able These to... knees still make me angry, man. <laughs> it's it's they're, they're blasphemous on the uh, in, in the Minecraft kingdom. Okay, so you were knees. extremely resistant to adding. They're not even really bendy knees, like in a lot no, of other I, rigs. I, I had to purposely put a point on them. I made a blend shape, basically a morph target, to make them stay pointy. That was the only way I was going to actually be happy with them. Yeah, they're a, they're a sharp they're a sharp bend. So, like in in a lot of rigs, you see it's a smooth curve so it does look kind of un minecrafty at times but at least it's a it's a good compromise because i mean the elbow's bent in the past so yeah because there's stairs if uh one of my shorts on my channel um uh, with the uh, uh iron golem there's a scene where a, a 
test certificate walks up some steps into an, a nightclub. Yep. And if you watch it, that is the reason why they meet knees. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Well, he gave in. And the good. poor zombies, they don't have any. Poor yeah, zombies. well, to be quite honest, it's it's okay if the zombies look kind of ridiculous. So, yeah. That's just me being lazy and I don't want to make another rig. <laughs> All you have to do is reskid, man. I know. I'm too lazy <laughs> for that. Fair enough. Besides, they look funny when they walk upstairs. They do. They do. Well, anyway, um, I guess we can move on to uh, the final scene, actually, when the king makes it up to the tower. Finally, one that was animated by me. So let's go ahead and jump on over to that. All right. So now we're in the final scene, which was animated by me, actually, in order to try to try to save David some stress. when it Yeah, came to, kudos to, to you. Time. <laughs> Glad you did a fantastic job. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I'll just go ahead and play it through really quickly. No, no, actually, you did a really good job. Well, thank you. So, um, okay. Okay, here we go. Spoiler alert. It's not really a spoiler alert because it was it's there in the video. But um, in the actual rendered out shot, you might see you might see there's a little water pool down there at the bottom. A lot of people were wondering how the king actually lives and goes on to uh, to revisit the village and, and flash back to this whole thing. He lands in that water pool. Um, but unfortunately, in the actual shot, it's it's sort of depth of fielded out. And since it's nighttime, the water is kind of hard to see. And YouTube's video compression made it almost invisible. So that answers your question. He lands in that water I kind of told myself that a nice wind gust blew him over to the uh, edge of the uh, uh, cliffside before he hit the ground. Oh. And, and everything was happy. <laughs> Not likely. No. He suffered some broken bones. <clears throat> yeah, I think I, I think he got a bit hurt in that fall. But I didn't actually decide how many years after this event it was that he was going back through and reading. Oh, no, it was like five minutes later. He came back five like minutes later. full beard five minutes later. It was like everything was destroyed and all full the people. Full beard. Left, full, you know. He actually, okay, in regards to the beard, I didn't notice this until after the video went up on YouTube. I didn't notice it either. If you, Yeah, we, we both. The, and we, I did that scene. <laughs> But I looked over it like 50 times. We both missed that. If you notice the king's beard here, it's the um, the handlebar mustache with the little goatee at the bottom. In the new, well, it's the present day, but when the after the village is, is destroyed and everything, the, the scenes I animated where he's walking on through and recounting everything, he has the, the full-on, full-face beard. He actually has that beard in the lower class scene, so it's and, a major uh, inconsistency. <laughs> on the original uh, king model that i made he actually had a crooked like l-shaped nose yeah and jordan caught that he said oh look he's got a uh got the wrong nose on oh he does i better fix that and the beard is the beard. on him the beard is just blatantly obvious but <laughs> so uh, oh well anyway oh well i don't think any, i i didn't see anyone notice that either so I'm not re-rendering it he just magically grew a beard and then had it chopped off in within a few minutes yeah, that's what i'm talking about the five minutes later the the entire town was destroyed Boop, yep. beard. <laughs> it's a superpower. So anyway, with this scene, I didn't actually animate the fall to follow a quadratic path. I just straight up had him fall in a linear fashion and then render every fourth frame. So it was slow motion. And it still looked pretty good. You couldn't tell that he wasn't actually accelerating. He was just straight up moving in a straight line. Um, I don't get why that coat was bunching up so much, though. It was because he is... He's falling with no acceleration, so the coat didn't uh, pull back. Right, because you're doing slow mo. That's yeah. right. That makes sense. So the coat basically just Minecraft went physics along with yeah Minecraft physics that answers everything because Minecraft has dynamic coats in it. <laughs> yeah. Actually, funny thing in regards to the Minecraft coats, when you crouch, they mesh intersect or not mesh intersect, but they double plane so badly. It's hilarious. <laughs> What a, what a double plane is, is if you have two blocks that, uh, it, it happens in Minecraft a lot because it's all cubes and they're on a grid arrangement. If you have two blocks that intersect each other or occupy the same space and you pan a camera around, it will just totally freak out. Um, That's called draw well. depth. And when the draw depth are, is the same, is just whatever's priority. So basically yeah. whatever renders faster on the draw refresh rate for the screen gets shown first. So, for example, um, down in the uh, the gallows area, down here, there's actually some redstone. 
um, that was there by default, or not by default, but that was included uh, when the set was built in Minecraft and then handed to me to uh, to export out into an OBJ. Um, Could we all know that uh, uh, Minecraft characters bleed out redstone? <laughs> <laughs> yes, precisely. So the redstone was here at the gallows, and when you're far away, although it doesn't mesh intersect close up and double plane, um, when you're far away, it causes it to do it, so I had to just take it out. Um, I guess You I just had to take it out. I could have just moved it up a little bit, and then it wouldn't have been an issue. But You could have, but I, it was pretty gory, you know, redstone. <laughs> I mean, no one wants to see any Minecraft character, you know, get sliced in two and redstone start flying out. <laughs> Ninja film. Ooh, ninjas. Maybe that'll be the next one. Ninjas. <laughs> Ninjas. Ninja Herobrines. Ninjas. He kind of is a ninja. He's got that hood on. But the th problem the with that is that uh, he has the, you know, his teal shirt and his bluish purple pants. Mm -hmm. And it really isn't night, night garb. He really can't really sneak up on somebody and say, hey, look at my, my uh, you know, my, uh, my, uh, Look at Lost my... for words right there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. I'm going to say threads, but I couldn't think of the word. Uh, yeah, look at my threads. And, you know, we wouldn't be able to sneak up on somebody in the middle of the night with uh, that flashy gear. No. So. Yeah. That fall looks so weird when it's from another angle. He's just not. Going yeah, do it in reverse all. and then uh, uh, have the camera underneath him. Yeah. <laughs> Like you sinking in water. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, I think that was a good range of scenes to cover. Covered most of the uh, the new additions to rigs and whatnot. So, you know anyway. what you, need, you should do? You should give that scarecrow way back there some airtime. The scarecrow? Yeah. Back scarecrow the, uh, did not get any airtime. He was kind of just there for aesthetics. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you can see him in one of the shots way in the background, but I think you can. Poor guy. He's so sad because of it. He has this I know. unhappy like, pumpkin he's face. distraught. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway. He's I think the one. He's the culprit. <laughs> <laughs> he's the one that, uh, you know, convinced uh, uh, her, Brian, to uh, uh, rain terror on these, uh, this uh, unsuspecting uh, village. Precisely. Freaking pumpkin. <laughs> yeah. I know your plan, pumpkin. Scheming pumpkin. You caught him, caught him red-handed. Yeah, he was, it was a horrible scarecrow anyways, man. It took out the entire crop. <laughs> Crows, you know, dead. came in, didn't do his job. <laughs> yeah, I did have to take out all the wheat because wheat is terrible when you import it, unfortunately. Double planes it's everywhere. like quadruple planes. It's terrible. Oh, yeah, it did, huh? Yeah. That's right. That was the first thing went, delete. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Not, not dealing with that. Well, all right. I guess that's about going to do it uh, for the behind the scenes. Actually, before we go, though, I did want to uh, let you guys know that if you're interested in more animations like this between the time that I post music videos, David does like this is all he posts on his oh, channel when put, he put pressure on me. Thanks. When when he does post videos at his his own discretion and his own time, um, he posts Minecraft animations. So. If you like the music videos and you like the animations, I highly recommend that you go and subscribe to him um, because you'll probably enjoy the stuff. And he's really good at animating and kind of awesome. So And free cookies and milk. Yeah. For me. <laughs> For you. So his, his channel link is in the description, uh, YouTube slash Bootstrap Buckaroo. And I think that's about going to do it. So uh, thanks for joining me. And no. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for all the... All the awesome animation you did for the video. And thanks for the opportunity, man. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> hey, I, I don't animate very much anymore, so, you know, this gives me uh, a handle on stuff that I miss. Fair enough. All right. Well, thanks for Cheers. watching, guys, and uh, we'll see you later.